Alright, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results of a medieval North Caucasian from Anapa. Uh, the sample this video is about is Anapa 9. Anapa 9 is a woman, she's got mitochondrial DNA U5, does not have um, Y DNA in terms of D ethnicity. I don't think I will show you the GED match and the G25 for this sample. I don't need to because you kind of see what they're closest to anyway, they're closest to various uh, Northwest Caucasian people, but uh, in terms of the subclade, if you want to see a very precise subclade for this woman, this seems to be the most precise <coughs> mitochondrial DNA subclade for her I could get uh, with uh, James Lick mitochondrial DNA finder. In terms of uh, the phenotype, let's move on to the phenotype. What did she look like? Right, so moving on to the phenotype, she's got, according to Nashakot, she's got black color hair. Uh, Greek shaped nose, a very high percentage for Greek shaped nose actually, look at that, it's 97%. Uh, this is the highest score for Greek shaped nose I've seen, so definitely very, um, a very protruding long narrow nose shape. She's got light brown eyes, that's what it looks like to me, 60% likelihood of that. Uh, was she genotyped for BH2? Yes. Okay, so she's heterozygous for BH2, so she has one light allele, one dark allele for BH2. She does not have blue eye haplotype 3. She is also heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 1. And she does not have blue eye haplotype 4. Okay, interesting. Uh, in terms of the color, the skin color related variants, she has two derived variants here. And what about this one? Yes, two derived variants here as well. So she, uh, with my web version of Nashakot, I am expecting that she is going to score light skin. Let's see. Right, so we're going to see her uh, web version of the Shakota results. The web version of the Shakota is saying she's got light brown eyes, which is what we saw with the executable version as well. Black hair, definitely black and not brown or or dark blonde or anything else. And yes, light skin, right? So 97% likelihood of light or lighter fair skin, definitely very light skinned. Um, black hair, and it looks like light brown eyes for her. And this is the predicted eye color with the Shakot, um a web version for the executable version this is the predicted eye color so you can compare them i think the web version looks a little bit nicer but the difference is uh the the eye color prediction that web version gives out is not unique there is a set of pictures that are that are predetermined and they're determined by your score right uh, whereas in the case of um in the case of the executable version it's unique uh, every person no two persons are gonna have the same exact eye picture so I don't know uh, which one do you like better tell me in the comments um, let's see wait let's see what she scores for the Oka 2 and Herc 2 eye color predictor for that she is scoring if you just look at the Oka 2 and Herc 2 genotypes she's scoring light brown eyes as well all right and uh, in terms of the predicted phenotype what she might look like here's a picture of what I think she might look like you know, give or take, maybe there's a couple of changes, but, you know, this is the general phenotype for her. Um, all right. This is not artificial intelligence. I just kind of looked looked up Georgian woman and found somebody who looked similar to this prediction. Uh, she has TT genotype in this variation of MAOA, which leads to lower activity of the MAOA enzyme. Okay, so she's a warrior in MAOA. She's not genotyped for the warrior warrior genotype in COMT, uh, variation in COMT. So we know that she's a warrior in MAOA. She's at least... Um, depending on her genotype in COMT, she's either a warrior overall or she's intermediate overall, right? And I think she's more likely to be warrior overall. Uh, she has one that have no go learner variant in DRD2 pro in pro, so intermediate number of dopamine D2 receptor sites. Uh, she has a G genotype in this variation of DRD2, which is implicated in a slightly increased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. But I think, um, I think she has this genotype right here, which is kind of uncommon which really counteracts this and this, the presence of the allele that causes higher um, number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, it really is counteracted by this genotype right here, which is actually uh, quite, uh, quite uh, with high reputability is linked to lower odds of schizophrenia, so I'm assuming it's also linked to decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. So this genotype right here is actually pretty exotic, pretty uncommon for people to have. But for her, she's homozygous for it, and she's got lower odds of schizophrenia. I think with the polygenic risk score, she's going to score really low for schizophrenia based on this genotype. But I don't know. I'm just making an assumption here. Um, 
Okay, so she does not have long form 5 HTTLPR. She's got short form 5 HTTLPR, just like most of you guys. She has CT here in T rank 1, average odds of bipolar and schizophrenia, and she does not have any risk variance for psychosis in this variation of MIR378F, very typical genotype. Uh, she does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation, neither of the two um, variations she has any drought variance. She has two variants for higher levels of empathy in OXTR, very interesting. Um, she does not have any hemochromatosis variants, no hemochromatosis for her. When it comes to Alzheimer's, that's very polygenic. We're going to see that with the polygenic risk scores page. For myopia, does there is there anything interesting here? She does not have the G allele here, right? So the G allele here would protect from myopia, and it's pretty uncommon. It's most common in white people and Europeans, but she, she does not have it. So no micro P, okay, but doesn't matter because she's a woman, but still no micro P. Um, impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete rather than sprinter. No fat gene variants in FTOs, RS99, 39, 609, not obese. Uh, two variants here for increased pain sensitivity, which is very surprising once again. This is another uncommon genotype. Um, the frequency of the A allele here is like literally like 10%. So having two A alleles, the, fr the frequency of this genotype would be like 1% among the general population. So very uncommon genotype, uh, definitely increased pain sensitivity. Uh, no East Asian EDAR. Okay, and um, greater odds of cannabis induced psychosis. Okay, so uh, I don't know if in the North Caucasus they smoked cannabis recreationally, or like in their culture. I don't know. Not sure. Uh, does not carry any of the albinism variations. Also, not a carrier of the Melanesian blonde hair variants. Okay. And does she have any risk variance for familiar Mediterranean fever? No, zero risk variance for all. Zero risk variance for familiar Mediterranean fever. And um, she has got normal genotype in MTHFR. Does not have problems digesting and um, synthesizing folate, folic acid. And um, when it comes to well, we already saw that. Actually, let's check out let's check out the polygenic risk scores. For the polygenic risk scores, okay, this is kind of interesting. So I was predicting that she would have a lower than average risk score for schizophrenia, based on, um, based on this genotype. But it looks like, it looks like she's actually scoring a pretty high score for that. Very interesting. She's got a below average score for type two diabetes, and she's got it looks like slightly above average score for Alzheimer's. Let's scroll back to the Alzheimer's. Uh, why is it above average? Why is the above average score for Alzheimer's? It's probably because of this, right? It's probably because of this genotype, which um, causes a significantly higher odds of Alzheimer's disease. Although there's a couple um, variations that play a part in the calculation that are not shown on the screen. Keep that in mind. Uh, we are going to look at her results with my ethnic calculator. Not GD match, not G25, my ethnic calculator. You can see how many SNPs were used in this, in this uh, calculation. Let's go ahead and copy this for the source. Um, this goes into the source, right? And um, this goes into the target. And she is closest to Shahr Isakta BA2, followed by South Asians, followed by Punjabi Jat, followed by Indian from Rupkund, followed by Bolshoi Leni Ostrov, Kimerian from Ukraine. And uh, place, what is this? What place is this? This is seventh place comes uh, Kafka's medieval Anapa. <coughs> yeah, that's right. You're going to see two more videos from these Anapa Kafkazians. So what is she, what about uh, mixed mode? All right, so for the mixed mode, she's getting more or less a mixture of 39% Turkish, 14% Spiginous, 14% Mongol, 13% Egyptian mummy. Okay, let's um, reduce that to three populations. Okay, if we redu reduce that to three populations, then a Turkish, Kazakh. It's only one person, by the way, for Kazakhs. It's it's not like I have a bunch of Kazakh references. It's just one person. So Turkish plus Kazakh plus Kotes Neanderthal. What about four populations? All right, so now it's Turkish, Turkic medieval, uh, Lo Kotes and Mongol. And what about five populations? The same thing. All right. Well, that's pretty much what this woman from Anapa is scoring with my ethnic calculator. If you want to see what she scores with GED Match, upload her to GED Match. The file is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content.